All right. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Audie Lee. I'm the PTL for Bobkin, and this is just a Bobkin project update uh, for Rocky. Um, I'll try to finish up and leave a few minutes for questions uh, at the end. So, so uh, just as a, uh, um, a summary, uh, like what does Bobkin do? Well, Bobkin is basically the uh, secret and the OpenStack, uh, each secret and key manager for OpenStack. Um, and in general, it's been used to do things like store, things like encryption keys, passwords, uh, TLS certificates, uh, and so on. Um, in particular, it's been used by various OpenStack services for things uh, like volume encryption, um, as well as glance image signing, um, and uh, Octavia uh, to store certificates and so on there. Um, it includes a REST API, uh, which is designed for the creation, storage, and the management of secrets. Uh, in various places. So uh, as a project background, it was uh, founded uh, in the Havana release. That's about five and a half years old. Uh, the last um, release, which was Queens, had about 35 contributors from 18 different com companies. Uh, so a number of people have been looking at it and, and contributing to it. Uh, a large number of those contributions are also to uh, Castellan. Uh, which is specifically the library that's used, or the API that's used to talk to Barbican um, from the various OpenStack services. Um, in particular, also, uh, during this release, um, OSP 13 came out, um, and so Barbican was integrated into OSP 13. So that's going to be coming out there um, with a lot of testing on the various uh, volume encryption and those types of features that happened there with Barbican. So um, some new features. Uh, for Rocky, um, there are a couple of usability features uh, which we're going to add there to Barbican Client uh, just to allow people to retrieve secrets uh, easier, uh, to, to list various secrets, um, and then also to retrieve various secrets in an easier way. Um, one of the things that's in Barbican, um, at the back end of Barbican, uh, there are various plugins, and these plugins are used to securely store your secret. So, Barbican is as secure as the back end that is used to store the secrets. Um, and those back ends can include things like uh, PKCS 11 plugin, which will talk to an HSM, for instance, for, for the highest possible security there. Um, there are also other plugins uh, that talk, for example, to uh, SGX type things. Um, there's one that talks to dog tag. Um, one of the things that people have been found, a lot of people are using, are HashiCorp Vault. Um, in order to store various secrets. Um, and so um, in the last cycle, um, folks had written a plugin uh, using Castellan, behind Castellan to talk to um, HashiCorp Vault. Um, and so during this cycle, we're taking that, hash that Castellan plugin, we're putting it behind Barbican, um, and we're creating a HashiCorp Vault plugin for there. Uh, so you'll be able to use HashiCorp Vault behind uh, Barbican. Um, so that's in progress right now. Um, I've actually just finished merging that particular patch, and we're in the process of putting together gate jobs to, to, to test everything. Um, Cross-project, uh, Barbican, as I mentioned, uh, is coming out in uh, uh, ROS uh, in, uh, ROS 13. Um, it's also coming out. Uh, it has been integrated uh, in the overcloud uh, over there in Triple O. Um, and uh, we just finished a set of patches where it's actually integrated into the undercloud in Triple O optionally. Um, the advantage of doing that is that you could use that, for example, um, to do Swift object encryption, and so you could uh, encrypt your, all of your Swift secrets and so on that are, are part of the, of the undercloud. Um, that helps definitely in the, in the hardening of things. Um, so uh, there are also some keystone changes. Uh, there's a read-only role. Uh, which has actually existed in Barbican for quite a while, for a while now. Um, well, I think we call it the observer role. Um, but Keystone is creating its own read-only role, and so we're going to make some changes to make sure that we're consistent with, with Keystone. Um, and uh, policy and code was actually done in the previous release, uh, but we need to finish that up because not only are you supposed to have policy and code, but you're supposed to document that policy and code. And so the documentation part of that in code is what we're going to finish up uh, this release. Rolling upgrades is something that um, was in the previous, uh, started in the previous release, but not yet completed. And we're hoping to finish that this time around. 
Um, there's some deprecated features, uh, which we're going to continue to remove. Uh, the big deprecated feature there um, was uh, Bobbikin used to have the ability to sign um, and, and generate certificates. Um, and we've taken that out of Bobbikin. Um, so a lot of that's going to continue to be deprecated there. Um, finally, there's a community goals, mutable config, uh, removing PyCryptos and all the PyCrypto stuff. Um, that has all been done um, and uh, is part of, the, part of the release. So uh, just to touch again where we are in terms of secret store plugins, uh, as I mentioned, that's what's behind Barbican. That's really what's providing the security for the secrets. Uh, currently, we have simple crypto, which is uh, basically uh, a key and a file uh, that is then used to in encrypt all of the keys that are inside the Barbican database. Um, that's going to be coming out as a default on, on um, ROS 13. Um, but it is, and it's better than, it's better than nothing because uh, nothing is what we currently have right now or what you have is, is a bunch of different keys in different, pass, uh, in different uh, files. This is one place where you can store it when you have one key to, to rule them all, as it were. Um, better than that, that's, so that's the worst, that's the worst uh, crypto that's there. Um, the other side of that is the PKCS 11 plugin with HSM. Uh, which allows you to store all of your key encryption keys and so on inside the HSM, uh, which is the most secure, but again, the most expensive way of doing things. Um, there's also a KMAP plugin, which allows you to talk to a KMAP device. Um, and then there's DogTag, um, which is a project that I'm involved in, uh, which is a separate system that would be uh, backed by either an, an HSM or an NSS database. Um, so all those are current plugins that are available. Uh, in Rocky, we're going to add the Oslo uh, Castlane plugin uh, to talk to uh, Vault. Um, and then in the roadmap, uh, there are a number of people that have started various things. Uh, Intel has um, the SGX module, which is uh, basically sort of a poor man's HSM, as it were. It takes, it takes advantage of some, H, of some Intel hardware um, and uh, as sort of an incli um, encrypted memory. Uh, an on enclave of an encrypted memory on there um, to to do to store the, the secret the key encryption keys in there. Um, so that's on the roadmap. Uh, we have to see um, where that comes in. Um, there, I, I know that there are some people that are also doing some work with soft HSMs uh, and of course TPM integration as well too. Um, so uh, in terms of clients, uh, there's a REST API, there's a CLI, Python, uh, Python API. Uh, Castellan, uh, again, used by various projects to talk to Barbican. Um, and um, in Rocky, we have some usability en enhancements. There's a, a file parameter that allows uh, the clients to store uh, keys that are retrieved from Barbican, uh, the ID field. Um, there's a, a UI for Castellan uh, that folks are working on as well, too. Um, and if there's nothing else in particular in the roadmap right now, but I'm sure that that will change. So. Documentation. Uh, basically, uh, we have uh, a quick start guide. We have developers uh, guide, uh, installation guide, API guide. Um, and we we'll also have a chapter inside the security guide, because, of course, we're uh, central to the security and storing of keys. Uh, in the Rocky, we have uh, some developers uh, for doing updates, um, uh, some better use case examples. Um, there's also going to be a lot of documentation that comes with ROS 13, um, and uh, we're hoping to continue to improve and update, and add more docs. If anyone uh, finds something that they don't know how to do, uh, please get a hold of us, and we'll figure out how to dock it and where. So cross-project implementation. Uh, currently, right now, uh, with Keystone, Oslo, Cinder, Nova, Glance, uh, this is for image signing in particular um, and volume encryption. Um, there is also Sahara, Magnum, uh, Octavia. Octavia, again, for um, uh, storage of, of, of um, certificates and so on and uh, there. Swift as well. Uh, that came in the last couple of releases or so. Swift is primarily for the uh, encryption of Swift objects. Uh, so we have a root key inside a... Inside a um, uh, config file, 
that, uh, or stored in Volokin that can be used to um, encrypt all of your, all of your Swift objects for everyone. Um, I believe that there are plans at some point uh, to be able to make that per project. So you'd have a, a different key encryption key per project. Um, and then uh, Barbican, there is a Barbican Tempest plugin, uh, which has uh, use cases and tests for all of these, the major use cases. Uh, and we're continuing to add more and more to this as we go through. So we make sure we don't break anything as we go through. Um, in Rocky, there is our, there's more scenario testing at the gate. Uh, so we're adding more and more use cases. Um, there was a talk on, which I was hoping to attend yesterday, but I didn't get to, uh, which is Tattoo, uh, which is now using Barbican uh, to store secrets. Um, this is SSH as a service. Um, there's more work going on in terms of bro browbeat, um, in particular because I'm doing, um, actually doing some performance testing uh, on, on Barbican. So there'll be things for browbeat and for, uh, for rally and so on to make sure that we have what we need to test the various use cases within Barbican. Uh, access policy. Uh, basically, we, we have RBAC. Uh, we have some ACLs already. Uh, ACLs are very useful because uh, they allow you to specify. Uh, so the standard policy, uh, policy.json, is that you, uh, if you are a part of a project, then you have access to all the secrets of that project. Um, ACLs allow you to specify that for a particular secret, a particular user that's not part of that project uh, has access to that. Um, and that's particularly useful uh, for uh, someone like Octavia, where they need, for example, the Octavia service user to be able to access uh, particular secrets. Um, policy and code is already there. And again, uh, within Rocky, we're going to add some usability enhancements for ACLs um, and the Keystone read-only role. Uh, we're going to add the more documentation of policy and code. Uh, but essentially, in the roadmap, we're planning to follow Keystone's lead as much as, as we can. Until, until we can't. So, um, where we are in terms of uh, project navigator status, we're currently at a five out of seven, um, and um, we're managed. Our vulnerabilities are managed. Uh, there's a bandit job uh, that uh, goes through and checks for vulnerabilities within Barbican. Um, we're going to add offline upgrade, uh, which is the rolling upgrades. Um, that'll give us six out of seven. Uh, which I think is about as good as we're ever going to get because seven out of seven requires, uh, I think, multiple libraries in multiple languages like C and various other things. So I think only Nova might have that. Um, so that's probably about as, as good as we're going to get. Um, if anyone wants to add uh, libraries in C and, and other places, feel free. We can bump up that, that maturity rating, but no one, there's no read from these for that right now. Uh, so out of the survey results, um, uh, last in the, as of back analytics rate, you know, the last survey, uh, we're in production about 7%, uh, testing about 7%, and about 19% were interested, gone down from 27%. I assume that that means that they're actually in production or testing at this point, um, which, is, which is great. Uh, so we're, I expect that uh, this is going to increase uh, in particular, when uh, when uh, ROS comes uh, ROS 13 comes out, because we will have Barbican by default, and well, not by default, but but uh, a lot of people will start using it there. Uh, finally, we need help, of course. Um, uh, we do have a, a bunch of good developers and so on, but we do need we need a lot of help. We need uh, anyone who's interested in TPMs and soft HSMs and so on. Uh, you know, uh, for those things to come off the roadmap and become actual things. Uh, we, need, we need some help with, it, with that, with that kind of integration. Um, documentation, use cases, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, any kind of uh, Horizon developers, if you want to uh, build more on, in terms of the Castlan UI or the Barbican UI, that would be great. Uh, still love to talk to people about various other uh, cross-project integrations. Um, again, we're, a big, we're an opening group, open group, uh, more than welcome to get contributions from anyone. So. Please feel free. And uh, that's it. Um, so are there, are there any questions? Anything else anyone wants to ask about Barbican? No, I, uh, I'll ask a question. Sure. So has anybody uh, considered uh, using something like Ubico uh, with Barbican? 
Yeah, so that would be, uh, uh, I, people have asked about that, and I, I know that some folks have actually tried some of that out. Um, I don't know, uh, you could certainly use like a PKCS11 plugin, for example, and see how that, how that works. I don't know how, I mean, certainly it's not, it's not a uh, production thing, right? You, you couldn't use a small Yubico key as your production uh, thing there because all of your, if your key encryption keys and all that kind of stuff are on there, um, you need to, uh, all of the, the crypto operations take place on there. Um, so that would be kind of, kind of tough in a, in a performance environment. But, uh, but certainly as a development tool, I could certainly see that working. Yeah, well, I mean, so, yeah, okay, thanks. Right, so, uh, but people have tried, have tried doing stuff and with, I haven't heard any one way or the other, so, yeah. So wouldn't you have the same problem with TPMs? With, with TPMs? Uh, potentially, maybe. <laughs> so again, TPM stuff is, is still, kind of in its infancy. Um, I know that uh, the SGX stuff has been tested by the Intel folks and they've written a white paper uh, and, and so on about that. Uh, and they've tested it with some performance testing and it seemed to perform well um, for them. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just starting to work on the TPM side of things. Um, so it, we, again, we need, we need help from from, from TPM guys to, to work more on that, so. Um, All right, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, if anyone's interested in working with TPMs uh, or knows anything about TPMs, please let me know. I know there's a lot of interest in that, so. Any other questions? So uh, there is there is an onboarding session um, tomorrow as well too. Um, if anyone is interested in, in, in getting more details, uh, I do go into a lot more detail about a lot of the different use cases and so on over here and the backend plugins uh, and and how they work. Um, and uh, it's kind of getting started with Volcan if you if you haven't started with Volcan yet. So, um, but. Uh, Any other questions? So I'm just I'm just curious, uh, how many people here have or actually have Bobbican in the either sort of in production or testing or okay, cool. And um, how how's it going? So is it does it work so far? Um, it, Okay. Because it, it, you know, it, it loops, mounts it, and it becomes like a DM, you know, like a mapper, dev mapper device. Okay, so you're talking about like, uh, in, yeah. like ephemeral volumes. And then it CDs into the NFS or the GPFS or and creates a symlink pointing to the dev mapper device that has the same name as the volume name, which overwrites the volume. So it just nukes it. Oh, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we can talk about that afterwards and, and, and see if there's uh, something we can figure out there. I, I, it's, a, it's a bug. I mean, I think they're trying to patch it. Okay. Yeah, maybe if you can let me know what the bug number is, I can try and follow, follow that at all. So, cool. All right. Anyone, anyone else? So, of, uh, of everyone else that's testing or deploying Bobbicon, are there any other issues that... Uh, that's coming up. Have you guys uh, done performance testing, or what kind of what kind of backends are you guys using? Are you guys using simple crypto, or are you using something else, TPMs or HSMs? Is anyone using HSMs? Just out of curious. Okay, which one? Okay. Well, yeah, but you can change that, right? So that's part of the. the um, the config, so you can you can change how how that's that's set there. Specifically, UTM. 
Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, well, I'm being given the time signal. So, um, uh, but if anyone else has any questions or something, well, I'm here. Thanks. <laughs>